Congratulations on your slew of shows that um, we've had the good fortune to look at recently. I'm the editor of Women in Film for the Golden Globes. Mm -hmm. And so many women that I speak to um, credit you and your programs for getting their first chance. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, what has it been in your life that has made you um, inclusive of the forgotten, the neglected, mm -hmm. um, and the ostracized? I guess my answer to that is that's how I have always felt about myself. You know, when I started off in Hollywood, um, and I've known you for a long time, uh, it was hard for me. I've, I've, I've told you that, you know, it was hard for me when I started. I got a lot of no's and I, I was told no a lot. And when I started in the business in the late 90s, Hollywood was really controlled by straight white men over 50 who really only wanted to work with people who were like them. and. I was not like them. I wanted to tell stories about women. I wanted to tell stories about LGBTQ people. And actually it was women who were my mentors, women in power. And there are not a lot of them then or now, but they, they recognized something in me that they felt the same, you know, somebody who was different, who was fighting against the system. And they were the ones, women, who gave me these opportunities. So once I got any modicum of success and I could keep making stories, you know, I was interested in those women and doing stories about them and for them, you know, women over 40, like um, so many of them in my career, you know, Jessica Lang and Sarah Paulson and Kathy Bates and Angela Bassett and now Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman, you know, and you can only be as good as your opportunities. And I just am interested in women and being their advocates and helping them and not just actresses in, in front of the camera. I also have a foundation called the Half Foundation that I started to give women more opportunities to direct. So, you know, one of the things I'm the most proud of in my life and in my company is that all of my work is, I believe at this point, it's around 62% of all of my projects are helmed by women. And, you know, it's an amazing thing. And I always joke and I always say, people say, well, why do you do that? And I always joke and say, well, women are just better. They just <laughs> are, you know. And I, I was very close also with my grandmother who helped raise me. So a lot of it feels like a tribute to her. And she would always tell me about how, you know, she had a lot of unfulfilled dreams in her life. And I grew up with a great sadness about that for her. So, yeah, that's, it's, you know, um, diversity and inclusion, I like to say, are just like multivitamins in my life. I take them every day. I practice them. It's part of my business practice. And I'm thrilled to say in some way, I think it's helped change the system, which is very different now than when I started. And that's so, what I think I'm the most proud of. Sorry, let me ask you about that. A lot of the product that you have brought into our homes are topics that a large percentage of the population rejects or mm -hmm. is afraid of. Mm -hmm. How have you gone ahead and made material that may not include everybody as an audience when you're trying to be profitable? How have you had that courage to say, this is a story everyone is going to come and watch? Yeah. You know, it's weird for me. I, I just make things that I would like to see, that I would like to watch for myself. And, and I believe in this idea that the, the more specific you make something, the more universal it can become. Um, so, you know, this past year alone, you know, I was more shocked than anyone that Ratchet with Sarah Paulson became such a worldwide phenomenon and has been seen by you know, close to 60 million people. Sarah and I, when we were making that, thought, okay, well, maybe 10 people will watch it. Because it's about a queer woman in a relationship with another woman. It's very stylized and very bizarre. And the characters are sort of, you know, big. But it just proves to me that people, there is an appetite for these kind of stories. And it's proven time and time again. And I made the prom because, you know, it's a story about a young woman who says, hey, I, I, have, I have a right to sit at this table too. I want to go to a dance. I should be allowed to be who I am. And that feels very sort of 
as a one-liner, very isolating and small. But I think so many young people, even if they're not gay, will see this story and feel, yes, I feel that same way about my own life because everyone wants to be seen and accepted. And all of my work is about that. It is about one thing, which is about everybody should be able to be who they want to be. And I think that's why they become hits because everyone feels that about their own life too. But I'm always, I'm always shocked when something I do works because, you know, I kind of think, well, okay, I like it, but who else will? So I've been lucky. I've been very lucky with that.